Uh, we have a Lawrence uh, model HDS5 on the bench. Uh, customer complaint is it won't turn on, so unit's dead. So I'm going to check a couple things that these I've found that these HDS5s are sort of notorious for if you have a no power uh, condition here. So we just took the back off. We got 12 volts hooked up. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to short our MOSFET here uh, that handles powering onto the board. Everything is plugged in, and I have a 1.4 amp short, so we're soaking up an amp and a half. Amp and a half, nothing. Amp and a half, nothing. I'm going to disconnect this cable here. Let's see what happens. I'm going to short it 3 2. About 400 milliamps. So we know the problem is this backlight board here. It's, it's actually not just backlight. Backlight's built in. It's also uh, the button assembly. Um, and it seems that there's maybe a short on this board somewhere. So uh, we have to tear the motherboard off. Uh, the motherboard frame right here needs to come off. And we're going to take a look at this, this board here. Okay, we got the keypad backlight board out. Uh, you can kind of just even tell this is the this is the coil for the backlight. And you see how it's it's a shade darker here. I'm willing to bet there's a short in there, and that's soaking up our amp and a half. Let's make it a little wet with isopropyl alcohol and see if that thing evaporates. Let's see. It's, there's my MOSFET here. Oop. It's totally in the way. Let's do that again. Get ready on this side. Oh yeah. So that IPA evaporates pretty much immediately. Uh, what I'm going to do now is let's yank that out. And we're booting up, guys. <laughs> that is perfect. I don't know if you could see that in there. You see that? We're booting. Awesome. So all we got to do now is uh, figure out a backlight. So uh, no power issue turned into backlight issue. Normally a backlight job is a higher estimate than a no power job, but uh, I'm sticking with the estimate I gave the gentleman. So he's going to get a, a no power and backlight job for the price of a no power job, if that makes sense. Okay, so we, we narrowed down the problem here. First of all, uh, what happens on these um, HDS5 units is um, they, they won't power on and they'll be pulling about an amp and a half. So if you see one of these units pulling about an amp and a half, most likely it's going to be the um, the keypad. See, it's actually the keypad, but it's actually built in the uh, backlight as well. This little section here, this, this rectangular section of the board is backlight. And let's take a look here. So I already desoldered that chip right there in the center. Um, we're here. I decided that there's two caps here, and there's a transformer here which generates the high voltage. I guess you could call it like a flyback transformer. Uh, so what happens is, what seems to happen is this chip shorts this chip toast right here, right? That sometimes, but not all the time, takes out these two capacitors, and sometimes, but not all the time takes out the primary side of this transformer. The primary side is right here. This section of coil is the primary side. So 
luckily in this particular unit, I had another HTS5 parts unit. In fact, I had two. One had a toasted transformer, and one seemed uh, like the transformer was okay, which is this one I soldered on here. This is the original one for this unit. You can see the slight discoloration right here. And this was actually getting hot to the touch, very, very hot to the touch when you try to turn on the unit. So I'm not going to trust this transformer now because most likely some of the enamel on those uh, wires probably melted in its shorting. So we're going to consider that one bad. The problem is this chip, this chip that's going bad here, I don't have it. So what I'm going to have to do is try to pull a data sheet off this chip. Somehow try to find a data sheet. Hopefully I can. And then try to cobble together an equivalent circuit for that. So if this is like a dual MOSFET driver or something, maybe we could take some single MOSFETs uh, based off the data sheet and kind of cobble together a dual MOSFET package. It's the only thing I can think of. Um, I did take apart the backlight of the unit itself. And... Um, it's fluorescent. It's a fluorescent tube going all the way around. So it's not as easy as the LED versions of the the newer models. I was thinking about taking some uh, plexiglass. In fact, you can see I already started cutting it. Uh, taking some thick quarter inch plexi and then making uh, a completely custom backlight with completely custom diffuser and LED board and drivers and da, 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 da. it's just it's it's a lot of work and unfortunately I mean I can't really justify that much work into an HGS5 here because I mean the customer is not uh, rightly so not want to not going to want to pay you know um, for all that labor it's just it's just a ton of work so we have to figure out a different um, different way to resolve this and that's repairing the board itself I think so let me do some research. I'm going to see if we can find a data sheet for this chip and we'll go from there. Okay, so we found the data sheet. Um, we're in luck here. Actually, it's a dual end channel 30 volt MOSFET. Uh, so that's two MOSFETs in one package. Uh, and let's, let's look at the uh, board here. So it says pin one is source one, pin two drain one, pin three, source 2, pin 4, gate 2. Okay, so we would expect some, some thin traces on the gates, right? Because that's just uh, turning the MOSFET on and off. So on pin 2 and 4, we'd expect some thinner traces. So let's look. This is pin 1. This is what, pin 2? Which should be the first gate. Well, it looks like a thin trace going to maybe this resistor here. This is four again. Looks like thin going there. Let's let's see if we can raise this up a little bit here. Get a better look. There. So you see that? See there's a thin trace here going to that resistor. There's a thin trace there going to that resistor, okay? So that looks good so far. So how about pin 1, the first source, and pin 3, 1 and 3? Those should be heavier traces because there's going to be more current flow going through there. Okay. So what did I say? 1 and 3? So 1, yep, look at the heavy traces. See that? 1 and 3, again, heavy traces. And those sources are probably going to ground. That's what we'd expect. So let's let's check that. We're going to put one probe on the ground of the board, the ground plane. And look at that. Pin 1 is going to ground. Pin 3. Ground. Awesome. Okay, so far so good. Now the drains. So pin 5 and 6 is drain 2, so we'd expect drain twos to be tied together so they should be shorted somehow maybe a trace connecting them to uh, those two pins together uh, pins seven and eight those are d1 so the first drain those again should be connected together so let's look at that so uh, five and six and seven and eight so five and six should be tied together 
So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. Five and six are tied together. See that? Seven, eight. Seven, eight are tied together. Beautiful. So it looks like we got the right data sheet here. So that's good. That's good. Uh, we can work with this. Um, I don't think I have any dual channel MOSFET packages in the shop. I know I ordered some. Yeah, I don't think I have any here. So that's okay. You know what we're going to do? Uh, like usual, uh, if we don't have the part, we're going to make the part. So what I'm going to do is really quickly design a little carrier board, a little, a little breakout board where we could solder two regular end channel MOSFETs on this breakout board and then solder some wires from the breakout board directly to where um, they should connect uh, on the board itself, the pins. So we're going to take this little chip package and blow it up into a breakout board. And hopefully we make this thing small enough where we can cram it inside the unit somewhere. All right, let me uh, let me get to designing that little breakout board, and we're gonna we're gonna mill it over there. Uh, as soon as it's done milled, uh, being milled, uh, we'll get right back. Okay, hopefully it's not too loud and you can hear me. I got that little breakout board milling over there in the corner. Uh, let's test this dual package MOSFET chip. Uh, just to see if our suspicion is right. Of course, we're not just going to throw parts of this thing, especially custom parts. We want to make 100% sure this is the problem before we do anything else, basically. The worst thing you can do, not only electronics, obviously anything, cars, whatever you're working on, you don't want to just um, throw parts at us. That's the worst thing you can do. You want to properly troubleshoot and confirm what the problem is before you go ahead and replace parts. So, uh, top left is pin 1. Which correlates to the the data sheet over here see top left is pin one so let's check uh, the source so pin one is source one we're gonna check that across to D1 and D2 which is uh, seven and eight because that's like one package pins one two seven and eight are sort of like one MOSFET I mean not sort of they are one MOSFET so let's see uh, and make sure that the source of our first MOSFET in that chip is not shorted to the drain. So I have my uh, my scope down here you can see. See right there. Uh, zero indicates open. One indicates short. So we're gonna go to pin one to the drain. Nothing, we're open, that's good. Great. Let's go to the gate of that first MOSFET to the drain. Open, good, good. Source to gate, good. Let's go to, uh, now we're gonna test the second section of the chip, which is MOSFET number two. So we're gonna go to S2, which is number three, to D2, which is uh, five and six. So let's go to pin three um, to pin six, okay? Pin one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa. Look at that. You see that over here? Watch. Shorted. Obviously, uh, D2, um, well, so that's normal to be shorted because it's, it's the uh, drain of that second MOSFET. Let's check the gate. Let's check the gate to the drain of that second MOSFET. Nope. 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 Yeah, if I get a good connection. Yeah, it is. So that second MOSFET shorted in that chip. That's what the problem is right there. Perfect. That's what we thought. And uh, that's good. That's good because this breakout board we're, we're uh, milling over here, which it looks like it's done. We should be able to take two uh, end channel MOSFETs and uh, sort of combine them into... A single package like this and, and repair this board so uh, I'm gonna get over there take the board out and we'll bring it right back so there's the board real simple okay 
We're going to pop this thing out, get the MOSFET soldered on here, and these pads. Um, we're going to get some wire soldered on those pads so we can directly connect this to the backlight board. Whew, okay, um, so we have our MOSFET board wired up here. So our MOSFET board here, our breakout board, is taking the place of this little tiny chip. We don't have this chip. we got to fix this unit. Um, so we sort of made this chip. There you go. It's about a thousand times bigger, but that doesn't really matter as long as we can fit it in there. Honestly, I'm not positive this is going to work. I mean, logically it should. Everything seems to... Everything else seems good. Um, and these two MOSFETs should be able to take place of that chip. I don't, I don't see why not. Okay, we're on... Or the power supply is on, rather. I don't see any current being drawn. It says currently no shorts. Okay. You guys can see this okay. Just don't want anything else to short on the board. The board is just loose here. And I'm going to press the power button. Fingers crossed. In three, two. Am I pressing the power button? No, I'm not. <laughs> Let's try it again. Uh, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Well, that's a new one. I've never had to replace a chip using multiple individual MOSFETs before, but hey, check her out. Backlight is good on this now. Wow. This was a little bit of a tough one, but we saved another unit from the trash bin. Awesome. Excellent. Whew. All right, guys. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, clean this up a little bit. We're going to put everything back in.
Uh, we're going to remount the, the display and the motherboard and the keypad. We're going to... Yeah, we're not even warm on these MOSFETs. That's great. That's just great. We're going to permanently mount that MOSFET board, that breakout board, inside the unit. We're going to fully test, hook up sonar, get this thing back to the customer. Uh, if anybody has any Lawrence fish finders, uh, any Garmin Hummingbird, or any electronic devices at all, or maybe a project, maybe you've been thinking about an invention and, and you need a, a place to kind of um, prototype it out for you, go to www.rudolphrepairs.com. You can email us, rudolphrepairs at gmail.com. Uh, if you want, you can give us a call, 1-800-517-9101. This was a tricky one, guys. We got her done, though. Until next time.